file and save it save all and now we need to work within our character swapper this is the uh, this is the middleman that we got to get working yeah it's gonna be doing all our functions for us so in our character swapper first thing we got to do is we need to receive that letter that was sent so if we right click and we type in the same exact name as the of the uh, interface message that was sent which was swap character you should now see an event event character swapping at the top add event we add event this is where it's like hey we received the letter let's open it up and oh this is what it reads let's let's go ahead and execute something so what we need to first do is we're going to make a couple of variables within this blueprint uh, and they're actually going to be inherited from wherever they were received wherever the letter was sent from or the uh, interface sent the message so first thing is the character camera we're going to promote that to a variable and I'm just gonna call this the uh, current character camera and we need to make this the first one and let's set this up to be another variable let's promote this bool to a variable and let's call this one the uh, switching to character 2 All right. Now there's going to be two things that need to happen when this event executes. So we're going to need a sequence node for that. So we can drag off this. We can drag off the set. Type in seq for search, and we can get a flow control sequence. We're going to break our node up to do two things. First thing we're going to do is we need to find out what is the camera's world location and rotation for our. Um, for the uh, camera of our camera or character swapper, so we need to drag out the camera from the content from not the content, excuse me, from the components, and we need to do the same thing we had earlier. We can do a get world location, get world rotation, and we need to promote we need to promote these to their own variables as well. So let's promote to variable and let's name this one a space world location and let's drag this in promote it to a variable I'm going to call this one a world rotation and we, let's plug that sequence into here so when the first thing that's going to happen when it en when it enters this when it enters this blueprint is it's going to find out where is this camera in the world so let's go ahead and comment on that for organization's reasons let's do a main camera component world rotation and locations Okay, so from here, once those locations and rotations have been established, we need to make a timeline. And this is what's going to make our camera move through the air. It's going to actually give our values of what needs to happen. So let's go down all the way to the bottom, do timeline. And we'll call this one car or camera movement. Let's not play from this, but let's play from start. So even if the camera doesn't make it all the way, if we were to hit that button again, it won't play from the beginning. It won't play from like where it stopped, like halfway through. It'll actually play from the beginning again. So it'll technically go through all this all over again. But even so, if you push that button again, it's going to go through and find the values. You won't be able to, to do any input until the camera's reaches location. So it should prevent it from uh, freaking out. So a couple of things that we need to do is we can double click on our camera movement our timeline and let's set up a couple variables in here where we have our length of let's say one and that's going to be our time and let's add a float variable and I want to call this um, lerp movement and this will give us our uh, transition feeling as we move across the space in the level. 
we're gonna add two keynote we're gonna we're gonna add two key two keys so the first key we click we can uh, highlight that we have the time we don't want that to be anything and we don't want the value to be anything for our second one we want the time to be one as in one second of length and the value of one so it might be kind of hard to view if so just click on your zit zoom to fit horizontal and zoom to fit vertical and I'm going to select both of these nodes or both of these keyframes and I don't want a linear transition that means it's going to be like a hundred percent it's going to be like stop go and like there's not going to be that a good transition feeling so we can click it we can select both of those keyframes and we can hit auto for key interpolation and that should give a smooth feeling if you want to you can actually do like a you can go crazy in here and you can give it like a, a slight like a quick takeoff but then like a really slow uh, give it a quick give it like a long slowdown or something really weird but I'm just gonna make this standard for now I'm gonna keep that where it was before all right and we should be done now with our timeline so from our timeline we want to do two things we need to first as this timeline is updating or playing we need to we need to set location and rotation of our camera. Now, if your camera wasn't selected, just type just type the set location rotation, and you can drag off a camera and set and hook it up to target. Now I'm gonna move this over here. We're gonna need a little bit of room. And what we need is we need to get an, a location and a rotation values for where this camera needs to go while this is updating. So that's while it's flying through the air it needs to read two different locations and try to figure out the distance between those or, or figure out the uh, midpoint between those two points so within our location we can drag out location and we can type in lerp vector and we can do the rotation and do lerp rotator and now we need to implement the action the um, it's like what is our a location what is B location well we have a location and we also have a world rotation and now we also need the alpha which is going to be what's our alert what's our alert movement going to be well we have already made that as well so we can plug in our alphas and we want the shortest path to rotation so we don't want this thing being not uh, like being at 359 degrees and decides to actually flip all the way back to like one or something so let's do shortest path so it's not flipping over and when it reaches this end location let's just do a teleport nice little new feature they've added in 4.9 that'll actually make it a quick transition you really won't see anything but we also need to get B's location and rotations so that's what the secondary sequence is for so if we go back to our sequence node we can come down and now we're going to start making our internal clock system so let's drag down and let's set a timer by event. Now using this timer is going to replace whatever reasons we needed for using event ticks or anything like that. This is going we're going to set this up so this shuts off when it needs to turn on or excuse me it's going to it's going to turn on when we need it and it's going to shut off when we don't need it. So it's never going to run in the background and we also need to create a variable for this so we can actually use something that pauses it and unpauses it so we can drag that out and promote that to a variable and let's call this new time handler time handler variable um, finding camera location rotation you can name it whatever you want this is just what I'm gonna call it for now and we want this time to be looping and we want it to loop every 0.01 now this is pretty quick but if you were to have this at a slower time it would look very jagged as it was moving across the uh, area so it would update like every second it would like jump every second if you wanted to doing the 0.01 is pretty quick so it should give a smooth feeling as it moves through the air uh, we do need to grab this um, variable here of the one we just made let's do a git and we can do a unpause timer by handle 
and if you hold down control and click on this node on the uh, arrow key you can actually pull it off and dry and reconnect it somewhere else so it saves happen to like move around in space a whole bunch and what this will do is when it enters here it'll unpause that timer and it begins counting uh, we're going to be pausing the timer when we get through the next couple sections here so I'll try to get everything in this video if possible okay so I'm gonna stop here in about a minute looking at the time again um, let's go ahead and make our event really quickly and then we'll go ahead and call this video done for setting up our initial blueprint for our spawn so let's go ahead and make a add custom event and for making this custom event we're gonna call this uh, camera is moving updates and this is going to be our uh, tick this is going to be our ticker every time it's going to be updating that timeline so let's compile and save everything and I'll go ahead and stop the video for there for now and the next part we'll go through the rest of setting up our uh, variables and constructing this blueprint and hopefully once this spawn is done we can get our character complete and we should be able to be done with our next video.